So for today's daily cancellation, I'm going to have to once again resume my role as the dad of the internet. That is my true calling, after all. My vocation is to deliver dad lectures to people on the internet who apparently never received any growing up. So we begin with an article in Fortune.com with this headline. Gen Z and millennial worker productivity is being crushed by bosses who don't understand them, top economic university research says. Now, this is not a surprising headline. As we know, the favorite pastime of Gen Z and millennials is to complain about people not understanding them. You don't understand us. It's like the whiny mantra of our two generations combined. It's the banner we march under. We're convinced that no one in history can relate to our struggles or understand our pain. No one's ever had it harder than us, we tell ourselves. That appears to be the general thesis of this Fortune article. It begins, uh, quote, starting a career has increasingly felt like a rite of passage for Gen Z and millennial workers struggling to adapt to the working week and stand out to their new bosses. Now let's pause and reflect just for a moment. Starting a career has increasingly felt like a rite of passage for Gen Z and millennial workers. This is like saying eating food has increasingly felt like a necessary step to avoid starvation for Gen Z and millennials. Younger generations have a narcissistic tendency to believe that everything they're experiencing is somehow unprecedented and unique. But now it's really getting out of hand. I mean, starting a career has been a rite of passage for every generation since the dawn of the industrial age. Let's just clarify that from the beginning. Continuing. But it looks like those bosses aren't doing much in return to help their young staffers adjust to corporate life. And it could be having major effects on their company's output. Research by the London School of Economics and uh, Protivity found that uh, friction in the workplace was causing a worrying, worrying productivity chasm between bosses and their employees. And it was by far the worst for Gen Z and millennial workers. The survey of nearly 1,500 UK and US office workers found that a quarter of the employees self-reported low productivity in the workplace. More than a third of Gen Z employees reported low productivity, while 30% of millennials described themselves as unproductive. Employees with managers who are more than 12 years their senior, the average uh, age gap between bosses and workers, are 1.5 times as likely to report low levels of productivity and nearly three times as likely to report unsatisfied, being unsatisfied in their job. Millennial and Gen Z workers thought that their abilities in active listening, time management, and judgment and decision-making needed to be honed to improve their productivity. A key obstacle, though, appears to be getting that point across to their older managers. Okay, let me, um, let me just give a little unsolicited career advice here. If you have had trouble communicating to your boss that you struggle with listening, time management, and decision-making, that's good. It's good that you have not successfully communicated that problem yet. Stop trying to communicate it. Keep that to yourself. And that's because your boss is not interested in helping you develop the basic qualities of a functional adult. If you don't have those qualities, your boss's solution will be to fire you. So if he hasn't noticed yet that you can't function as an adult, then don't tell him. Like, he'll figure it out. But, you know, sometimes in these places it takes a while. So just, just ride the wave, at least. Now look around your office. Do you see little chairs at little tables with uh, glue sticks and crayons? Do you see cubbies where people are keeping their lunch boxes? Do you see an alphabet rug in the middle of the room where you sit and listen to somebody read Dr. Seuss books? Probably not. And that's because your place of employment is not a kindergarten classroom. You are not there to learn how to listen and pay attention. You are expected to already have those fundamental skills. And if you don't, then you are wildly unqualified for all jobs in existence. You are a broken person, and your manager cannot be expected to fix you. That's not in his job description. The article continues in that vein and ends this way. According to research by Vitality, employees under the age of 30 were losing 60 productivity days a year, uh, largely due to issues with their mental health. Younger workers were more likely to suffer depression, to report significant financial concerns, and to be dissatisfied with their jobs, the health insurance group found. The findings also point to a trend of younger workers losing motivation for a career as an increasingly unequal economy removes their incentives to succeed in the workplace. In a viral video responding to criticism of Gen Zers by 54-year-old comedian Rick Mercer, TikToker Robbie Scott laid out exactly why Gen Zers might be putting in less work than their parents did. Now, there's plenty to say about what I just read, but first, let's watch this video from TikToker Robbie Scott. This went viral recently. It has millions of views, thousands of comments from Gen Zers and millennials shouting amen uh, it's really resonated with the younger generations, and let's uh, listen to it. I hate to sound like that person crapping on a younger generation, but she's literally saying, what's it like to do something that 
the vast majority of people in North America have done for their entire lives. We need to stop expecting the same damn people who bought a four bedroom home and a brand new Cadillac convertible off of a $30,000 a year salary working at Perkins to understand what it's like to be working 40 plus hours a week with a master's degree and still not being able to afford a 400 square foot studio apartment in bum Iowa. Okay? I don't care if you're a boomer, if you're Gen X, if you're dead in the ground, I don't give a shit. Nobody likes to work 40 plus hours a week. No one likes it, okay? If that were true, we wouldn't have so many of you trying to become billionaires so that you can one day pay people to do that work for you so you don't have to do it. We are not crying. We're not getting angry and whiny and entitled because we can't work nine to five. Yes, we can. We do it every day, which is we're holding up our end of the deal, right? We're staying in school, okay? We're going to college, okay? We've been working since we were 15, 16 years old. We've built a huge line of credible references, doing everything that y'all told us to do so that we can what? Still be living at our parents in our late 20s? <laughs> Millennials and Gen Z are working more than any other generation ever has. It's a fact. We are more educated than any other generation. Also a fact. We are also making considerably and disproportionately much less than any other generation has. Also a fact. And that is kinda I know people in their mid thirties who have been working for 20 years. That's like 70% of their waking life. They have been working and they still cannot afford to purchase their first home. And I don't live in New York or LA. I live in Minnesota, Minnesota. That is why some of us are crying. That's why some of us are angry because this is, this is annoying. We're holding up our end of the deal and someone on the other side is not holding up their end. And it's annoying, okay? If boomers and Gen X had experienced what it's like to work as much as they did and get nothing in return, they would be able to sit across from us and go, oh my God, I feel you. This is so shit. And you know what? Some of you are capable of cultivating empathy and I appreciate you. But those of you who have nothing to say but judgments and calling us entitled, f you, because you don't get it. Okay, well, Robbie, I'm a millennial. I'm not that much older than you. And I will say, yes, you are entitled and spoiled and lazy. And you need to stop crying like a little pathetic baby. Keeping your windshields clean is always a pain, especially in the winter. Dirt and salt pile up and washer fluid just can't get the job done. That's where my friends at Windshield Wow come in to save the day. Windshield Wow is an innovative windshield cleaning device that uses two magnetic cleaning paddles, one on the outside and one on the inside of your car, to clean both sides of your windshield, all from the outside. All you got to do is push around the outside paddle and the inside follows automatically, leaving your windshield squeaky clean. We get a lot of rain here in Nashville, which uh, leaves you with a hazy and dirty windshield. Throw one of these in the back of your car so you can always have a clean windshield. I personally own a windshield. Wow, this is one of the best products for my car windshield. Being able to clean both the front and the inside window at the same time is a game changer. I wish I had one of these years ago. The windshield wow applies firm cleaning pressure. It's super thin to get into those tight dashboard areas. What are you waiting for? Go to windshieldwow.com. Use code Walsh to check out for a special discount. That's windshieldwow.com and use code Walsh. Now, let's just run through a few points here. Boomers were not buying Cadillac convertibles and four-bedroom homes off a $30,000 a year salary, okay? You know, if you'd gone to Perkins in the 1980s, you're not going to find a bunch of Cadillac convertibles that the waitresses are driving. That's a fantasy you've made up to justify your feelings of persecution. And if you cannot afford a studio apartment in Iowa on a 40-plus-hour-a-week job with a master's degree— then, then, then you need to find a new career in a hurry. I mean, what's your salary? Negative $20,000 a year? Are you getting charged money to work your job? You should definitely be able to afford a studio apartment in Iowa or in many other places, even in this economy. Like, is everybody in the world homeless? If that, you can't afford, 40 hours a week, you cannot afford a studio apartment. That means everyone's homeless. Like, every, almost everyone in the world is homeless now, I guess, apparently. And you go to Iowa, everyone there is homeless. The entire, the entire state. Look, I know things can be tough, but there's no need to wildly exaggerate. It's true that boomers had an easier time affording housing. It's also happens to be true that boomers, on average, were buying much smaller homes and fitting more people into them. These days, the average home size has gone up while the has gone up while the average household size has gone down. So you've got fewer people who are looking for more house. Okay. Now, when I was a kid, we lived in a 2,000 square foot single family home. I had eight people in my family sharing that home. Now, the average family size today is 2.5 people, and the average house size is 2,500 square feet. So people want bigger houses for fewer people, and they also want to fill their houses with more expensive stuff. Now, that doesn't entirely negate or explain away the struggles people have finding housing these days. I'm not denying that, but it does add a little bit of necessary context. 
The boomers were not getting jobs as waiters at Denny's and then going out and buying castles with drawbridges and moats and a squadron of guards in shining armor, okay? So just calm down a little bit with the hyperbole. Are millennials and Gen Z more educated than any other generation in history, as Robbie says? No, definitely not, not uh, Robbie. Millennials and Gen Z, on average, have spent more time in formal educational facilities and have earned more fancy pieces of paper and have spent more money acquiring them, yes, but are they actually more educated? To be educated is to be knowledgeable. And there is very little evidence that young adults today are more knowledgeable than previous generations. In fact, all evidence points to the contrary. That's because the education you acquired was mostly useless, and in many cases, it made you dumber than you were going in. And if you're mad about that, you should be. You got scammed, you got worked, you had your pockets picked, you got, I mean, you got taken for a ride. But you know, I noticed these self-pitying Gen Z rants are rarely directed at the university system, which is the system that scammed you and gave you the worthless education that they charge you six figures for. Take it up with them. Why are you yelling at them? And these rants also rarely end with what should be the obvious conclusion that people need to stop surrendering their money and their minds and their financial futures to these institutions that will do nothing but squander and destroy all of it. Now, it is true that millennials, um, or rather, is it true, as he says next, that millennials and Gen Z are working more than any other generation? Well, this case that millennials and Gen Z are working more than anyone seems to rest on the belief that baby boomers were the first generation of humans to ever live on Earth. Robbie seems to be laboring under the impression that the human species sprouted suddenly out of the ground like dandelions about 75 years ago. Now, it, it, it still almost certainly wouldn't be true that young adults today are working more or working harder than baby boomers did at the same age. You know, that, that, even that is probably not true, but at least there you might have a case. The problem is that the baby boomers are one generation. There have been thousands of generations of humans on the planet. Did you not learn that when you were getting your master's degree? At best, at best, you might have it harder. Might. And you might be expected to work harder. Might, in certain respects, than one other generation of humans. One. Beyond them, you have no case, Robbie. Now, do you really think you have a more difficult and laborious life than people who lived in, say, 1910? The generation that literally built this country with their bare hands? Are you working more than them? What about a guy your age who lived in 1870? Or 1720? Or the 1690s? Go back and back and back, Robbie. Would you trade trade places with any of them? Do you think you're working more, working harder, and striving more to get less than any of them were? Now, you can't tell me it was a long time ago. It doesn't count. You just said millennials and Gen Z are working more than any other generation ever has, which means you're claiming that you are working more than the hundreds of human generations who grew up in agricultural societies, had to work hard labor from sunup to sunup down to sundown every day, seven days a week, and then come back to a two-bedroom cottage shared by 10 people and repeat that every day forever until their bodies broke down and they died at the age of 52. Do you really think you work more or harder than them? No, not even close. So when you say that you work more than any other generation, what you mean is that you think you might be working more than some people in one generation. Might be, maybe. But compared to literally the whole entire rest of human history, you are living in absolute luxury. I mean, another way of putting this is that your generation has it easier and lives in more comfort and luxury than all other generations of humans that have ever lived with the possible exception of one. That's what you're really saying. But when you phrase it like that, it's kind of hard to keep the pity train going, isn't it? Now, does that mean that your own struggles aren't real? Does that mean that you are experien- you're not experiencing any hardships at all? Does that mean that you have no legitimate gripes? No. I mean, you have your struggles and your hardships and your gripes. Even if your wealth and comfort basically makes you an Egyptian pharaoh compared to the vast majority of humans who have ever lived, Still, you know, you have your own hurdles. Some of them are relatively significant. Okay, fine. It's been acknowledged. Your complaints have been officially registered. I will write it on a slip of paper, and I will put it in the cosmic suggestion box. Here are the things that Robbie doesn't like about reality right now. He wishes these were different. Got it noted. Now what? Because 
no matter how legitimate your complaints might be, you still have to live your life. That's the thing that you people miss. The other option is to stand paralyzed, waiting for the road to smooth out ahead of you. But it never will. Like You keep saying, and I hear this a lot, we've held up our end of the deal. What deal? What deal do you think was made with you? Who did you make this deal with? Okay, life is not a giant Dave and Buster's prize counter where you just cash in your tickets and get a little trinket from the assigned bin. Well, I've got this many tickets and so I should get that. That's the deal. It's not a simple exchange like that. Life is toil. Life is work. Life is a constant battle. Okay, life is climbing down into a pit and grabbing happiness and success from the mud and holding onto it with your teeth and climbing back out of the pit covered in mud and with calluses on your hands. That's what it is. Now, I wish it was as simple as just doing a few things on a checklist. Go to college, get a degree, get a job. And then, and then, and then joy and fulfillment just descends out of the clouds right into your arms. I wish it worked that way. I really do. But it doesn't. It never has. It never will. If you want success, you're going to have to scratch and claw and fight and crawl and grab it and hold on. As everyone else has had to do. There is no other way. There has never been any other way for almost anyone except the absolute most privileged few, which you are not, and neither am I. Oh, well. Now, it's okay to be disappointed or frustrated by certain aspects of reality, but if you're waiting for someone to come along and magically rescue you from it, or change your reality for you, or fix whatever you think is broken in your world, you'll be waiting forever. And you will die before it happens. You'll have to change it and fix it yourself. But you're never going to do that if you're too busy crying that it hasn't already been done. Okay, that's life. This is life. It is how it works. Welcome to it. It will never work any other way. You don't like it. You don't have to like it. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. That's the part you seem to miss. And that is why you are today, I'm afraid to say, canceled. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Wall Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.